Welcome back to Trionic 7. So, I'm Jonathan, and the topic of this video is going to be the Saab Workshop Information System and Electronics Parts Catalog Softwares. So these two tools are extremely useful for any person working on their Saab, since they contain all the workshop manuals and all the parts catalogs, so you will be able to find anything from part numbers to basically how to install and remove an engine, and so on. It contains a lot of useful stuff. So this is the first part of this video and we will talk about installing the software. It's uh, quite a few things you need to think about when installing on a modern computer. And then part two will be about how to actually use these two softwares. So I'm using Windows 7 64-bit edition but I believe you can adapt these instructions to work with any machine, no matter if you're running Linux or if you're running a Mac. So hopefully this video will be will make it possible for you to use the workshop information system softwares. The main problem with installing WIS and EPC is that they were made a long time ago, before 64-bit computers were common. And as such they are 32-bit programs. So let's say I'm having the CD installed, open the computer and go to the workshop information system and I want to install for my 9.5 and then press setup and this happens. Basically what it means is that it's a 32-bit program and you're trying to run it on a 64-bit computer which is impossible in this case. And I've seen some people, they basically reinstall their whole computers using a 32-bit operating system but that's too much to ask, because if you do this, you will lose access to most of your RAM memory, since a 32-bit operating system only can address up to 3 or 4 gigabytes of RAM. And this is, of course, unacceptable with a modern computer. So, these instructions will show you how to install the software in a so-called virtual machine instead. So first of all, how do I know that I have a 32-bit or 64-bit operating system? Well, if you're using Windows 7, it's quite simple. You start, go to Computer, right-click and then click Properties. And then you can see 64-bit operating system just here. This means you cannot install EPC or WIS on this computer. The virtual machine we'll be using is called VMware Player. And it's a free software. Not a free software, but it's it doesn't cost you anything to download. Free software is something else. So I've gone to the VMware homepage, VMware Play for Windows 64 bit, and I click download. Run. And then we download the software. It's about 75 megabytes. So it should be okay to download with your broadband connection. You, of course, also will need to have the WIS and EPC software themselves. And it is possible to find these disks on eBay or from another person on one of the Saab forums, but I mean, I consider this to be abandoned where this software is not developed anymore, Saab is bankrupt, and well, I got this software from a BitTorrent site or the Pirate Bay, and you could do the same if you wish to, but be sure to read up on your copyright laws and you know what you actually have to do to download it. So I'll install the VMware Player. Next, 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 nothing very difficult here. So after a few minutes, it will say Setup Wizard Complete. We click Finish. So to run the software in free mode for non-commercial use, as we will do here, you will need to enter your email address. Okay, click Continue, Finish. Okay, so this is the starting screen of VMware Player. Now, the next step is to create a virtual machine using a 32-bit operating system. And again, you will need to get an ISO image of a 32-bit operating system. I will suggest using Windows 7 32-bit. And uh, if you have such a disk, that is very good. If you don't, well, I don't know, maybe you can search around the web and find 
a download for it. I'm not gonna tell you all the steps because that's copyright infringement. But I have a Windows 7 32-bit disk in this computer. So I'll create a new virtual machine. And then I will check, not Saab, but I will use this Windows 7. And for VMware Player can do easy install, which is very useful. So I'll just click Next, and it will install Windows 7. And here you'll need to provide a product key. I've blurred it out because this is mine. I've selected Windows 7 Ultimate as the version, and my name is Trionic 7, which is nice. So I'll click Next. I'll just call the machine Windows 7 and then put it on my documents folder. This will need a couple of gigabytes of disk. It says here 60 gigabytes, but that's the maximum. We will not use this unless you filled your virtual machine with so many files. So you can just click next, and then we finish. Now the process starts. It will create the disk and install the operating system. And I will not bore you with it this entire process, but I'll skip to the end. Okay, so it took maybe 2-3 minutes, it was surprisingly quick, and now it wants me to install VMware Tools, and this is a very good idea, so I will download and install this. And in the background you can see the window, which is the virtual machine, and it is running Windows, so it's booting up for the first time. So here we are, with a freshly installed 32-bit version of Windows 7 in a virtual machine. So it's basically a computer in a box. We can pause it, we can shut down, restart, and so on. It's quite straightforward. And what we need to do now is double check that we have the correct version of Windows, just to make sure. And this is a 32-bit operating system. So we close this one, and now we want to install WIS and then EPC. So to do this we go to player, and we go to removable devices, and then we change the settings. So if we go to the host machine, open up the computer, we can see that WOS is on disk D. And therefore we select disk D to be the CD-ROM drive in the guest machine. And we open the computer here. Oh, it actually popped up an autoplay. Open up this folder. And here you can see WIS and the installation files for it. So we select the sub 95 and set up WIS. Okay, we select US English for the installation. And as you can see, it's a really old style software. Okay, so we will do a complete installation on standalone PC, which means that we will install everything on this computer. We'll choose English, apparently it's British English, whatever, and click Next. And if you can s see here, I have the 2010 version of WIS. Obviously you will need a version that at least is as old as your car, so uh, I'll choose the languages, where's English, there's English, and we'll also install the Swedish version just for me. So next, and then next, uh, next again, and next again. Okay, after a few minutes it finished installation, so we click finish, and it suggests that you restart the computer, so well, you probably don't need to on Windows 7, but we'll do it anyway. Ok, so the computer has now restarted and immediately greeted us with an installation of Shockweb 8. I mean, th this is Stone Age software, but I don't think it will hurt to install it anyway. Click Next, and continue with this installation. Congratulations. Click Finish. Yes, yes. Company Trionic 7. This is where I work, am I right? Next, finish. Is there anything more? No, okay. And now we're back to the desktop, and WIS is installed. Now we want to install EPC, so we go to E, so again we go to the player, 
removable devices and then go to settings for the CD drive. It will emulate a CD drive on the guest. Change this to E. Press OK. Now we can wait a few seconds and there will be an autoplay EPC and we open this up. You open the disk and you press the setup. Nothing else. This is a setup application, 44 kilobytes. Double click this click yes and the next few steps might be a little quirky but they seem to work for me okay so the next thing to appear is the language choice you press English and then next and what appears to happen now is you go back to the Explorer window but you just need to wait for a few minutes don't do anything just let the computer be and eventually you'll get the startup of the setup running but in the meantime nothing will happen at least not for me so just be patient and then finally the setup window does appear so we click on next yada 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 next and we will perform a maximum install so that you have all the EPC files on your computer it's about 400 megabytes so it's not very big with modern standards but I guess when this program was made, 400 megabytes, megabytes was quite a bit. And after the setup is complete, you will see this dialog asking you to restart the computer. So let's just go ahead and do that. Okay, after installation and rebooting, let's try starting EPC. So we'll give an error message. And here we are. And Let's just check if we reboot EPC. Okay, it still gives an error message, but it should be working anyway. So now we can select your car model. You can go all the way back to 1986 Saab 900, or we can go all the way to the modern Saab 95 up to 2010. Obviously, this is the 2010 version program, so it can't go any further. But let's open my car. So 2002 Saab 95. So we have everything here, all the parts. We can go to the engine, look under the transmission, and just check everything here. We can go up to find part number for the seal, the screws, and everything. But I will talk more about how to use the programs themselves in part two of this video. So let's close EPC and check that WIS is working. WIS, Workshop Information System. Now you can just select your username, just use default, select your model, 02 Saab 95. If you want to have other models, you need to go back to the EPC disk. No, sorry, the WIS disk and install those too. Here we go. So we can go to engine, basic engine, force it in the petrol that we all love, and check everything engine block to dismantle the engine, yada yada yada. So this is WIS and it seems to be working. So let's just start up EPC as well. Okay, so EPC and WIS are both installed on this 64-bit Windows version using a 32-bit virtual machine with VMware Player. So I hope you enjoyed this video and there, I guess there's going to be a lot of issues depending on what machine you have or computer you're running or Windows version you're running, but I think this should be general enough to cover most cases. And I also think, but I haven't tried it, that this should work under Linux or if you're running a Mac. So probably you should get this to run at any, almost any modern computer that you could want to have. Okay, so this has been another Trionic 7 video. Be sure to check out part 2 when it arrives. Otherwise you just leave a comment if you like the video. Or if you need help, just uh, comment below. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, Instagram and our Reddit page and I'll see you guys in the next video.